I know, it's been a super long time since I made one of these videos, and part of that is due to my whole pyoderma diagnosis from last year and, well, the doctors almost having to amputate on my foot. If you don't know about that and are new to my channel, it's a very long story, and even after a whole year, my foot has still not fully recovered. But at least I'm out and about and not sitting at home doing absolutely nothing. With that said, let's see what there is to see both at the thrift stores and other various secondhand shops. This Goodwill I've found some gems at before, but this time around there just really wasn't that much going on. Usually I can find at least one common or even junk title, but no, this time it was nothing. They do have Submerged on DVD starring and featuring the wonderful Steven Seagal back when he sorta kinda gave a shit. Now he just mumbles his way through movies and uses a stunt double any opportunity he can. Some did, some are lying out there. You got a round notch in your spine. I stopped the bleeding, but there's really not much more I can do for now. We won't have to wait until some folks get here. Can't fix this damn thing. I don't go to many Salvation Armies anymore because a few of them have closed up for good, but this one is still around. Not much into plug and plays anymore, although this one did catch my eye. It's for the game Outrun 2019, a Sega Genesis game, and a good one at that, but this thing is just bizarre. At first glance, I didn't really understand the controller until I realized that in order to turn your car, you have to twist on the weird steering wheel design. I've never seen anything like this before, and maybe that's for a good reason. This place, for some reason, had a stack of the very same Madden 13 game. No idea what that's about. You might be thinking, hey Foxy, why don't you grab that Modern Warfare? It's only a few bucks. What a deal, right? See, you might think that. Until you realize, it's the download-only version of the game. No disc, just a code printed on a piece of paper inside of a video game box. And the chances of the code somehow not being used are on the same levels of me ever hitting the lottery. I know this is kind of off the wall, but it's been over 20 years since I've really seen these in person. They're old Texas instrument calculators that aren't powered by batteries or solar power. They are ones that you actually have to plug into an outlet. The one on the right I believe is from the mid 70s, but I have no idea about the one on the left. I don't think they're really worth anything, but who knows. It's probably stupid that I think these things are somewhat interesting, but whatever. I'm weird. I don't know what to tell you. On the bottom shelf of this same Goodwill, I saw a vintage Hudson brand 8mm film viewer editor. These things are super cool. I've showed one off in an earlier thrift store video. My dad, you see, he was huge into 8mm stuff and vintage cameras in general, so this sort of stuff is right up his alley. 8 bucks isn't even that bad of a price since it's in good shape and it still works perfectly. They're not really worth a whole lot, maybe 20 to 35 bucks if you're lucky. I just get a kick out of seeing stuff like this. And not too far away was actually another film editor, but this one is much heavier and better made in my opinion. It's a Fairfield 650. A little bit of wear on it, but for the age, what do you expect? Damn thing is still in better shape than I am, and I'm only 30 years old. But unlike the Hudson one I just showed off, this one, despite me liking it more, it's not worth really anything. I have seen people try to hawk up the prices to 60 bucks, but the only ones that ever sell are around $20 or less. I don't know, I think it would be a nice piece at a photography museum or if someone is really into old school film. If my dad was still around today, I probably would have grabbed both of the film editors because I knew he would have gotten a kick out of it. Elite Forces World War II Normandy. This one caught me off guard. You know, I kept thinking, oh man, where have I seen this game before? Why do I know what this is? 
Until later that night, I realized that, oh yeah, Elite Forces was that weird series of horrible first-person shooter games for the PC, and at one point, I did play one of the games. But it was the Iwo Jima one, and from what little I remember about it, the game's campaign only lasted like maybe an hour, and a good chunk of the game didn't even take place in Iwo Jima despite the title leading you on to thinking that the entire game takes place on that island. It, it really doesn't. I'm kicking myself a little bit for not grabbing this, but then again, I don't even have a computer with a disk drive, so I, I don't know. I guess technically I could display it on my wall in sort of a wall of shameful games type deal, which isn't even a bad idea. A few days later, I made my way back to that same Goodwill, and to no real surprise, the game was still there. So I grabbed it on a half-off day, making the game only cost me a whole dollar. Who knows, maybe I'll grab one of those USB disk drives and maybe make a video on the game in the future. But don't quote me on that. I feel like I've seen a PlayStation controller like this before, but in much better condition. What a weird design. The buttons are so oddly spaced apart, and the controller itself is much larger than that of the official Sony one for some reason. Weird to see, kinda cool at the same time. I don't really find many controllers for earlier game systems anymore. Not really sure why that is. Bit of nostalgia here for me. I actually had one of these Dazzle things over a decade ago when I first made my channel. They're horrible now by today's standards, but back then, before the Hapogs, the Roxio, Elgato, and various other game capture cards, you pretty much only had a Dazzle, or a nice camera to record gameplay footage with. I don't know, I thought it was kind of cool to come across, but it's not something I would ever recommend anyone buying. The quality's just terrible, and they're not all that reliable, if I remember correctly. I found some old footage from last year when I was at a Five Below. They had a few games here, kinda shocked to see a PS5 game, even if it is just a sports title. I decided to grab that Battlefield 1 Revolution Edition for the Xbox One. I really like the game a lot, and since this comes with premium with all that DLC, 5 bucks is more than worth the price. Wish they had it for the PS4, but I'm not gonna complain at all. It's definitely one of my favorite Battlefield games that has come out so far. Recently, I stopped back at Five Below, and they had quite a few different titles this time around. That Monkey King game, I almost bought from Disc Replay this exact day for 8 bucks used. These games being sealed makes buying them a no-brainer, and I did pick up a couple games, including that Monkey King, Risk of Rain 2, whatever that is, and this bizarre off-the-wall drone racing game for the Xbox One. They also had this DLC type deal for the free-to-play game World of Warships, and I don't really know too much about the game. I'm not really into free-to-play games, generally. I mean, there's only like two that I really enjoy. I don't know, I guess the idea of these DLC codes inside game cases for a game that is free-to-play is one of those things I just, I don't get, I don't understand it. Here I am at a pawn shop that I've been to a handful of times before, and this one like my favorite pawn shop that I unfortunately haven't been to in a very long time. They sell PS4 and Xbox games for 10 bucks a pop, usually. But it's definitely been picked through. There were a few titles that I thought about grabbing, like Carmageddon and Injustice 2's Legendary Edition, but I swear I've seen both of these games elsewhere for cheaper. I did not see that Game of the Year edition of Fallout 4, which annoys me now because I absolutely would have snatched it up for 10 bucks. I always check out half-priced books and their clearance section whenever I go there. Sometimes you can find great deals for cheap, and other times there's just really nothing but junk. Their clearance prices are fantastic, they're usually under $3 a game. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything I really had to have this time around, but then I stumbled across some old footage back when I first started walking without a cane, it was like back in January, where half price books I guess must have been having a blowout sale on games and movies. Well, I ended up grabbing both that State of Decay 2 game and Invisible Hours for just two bucks a pop. 
also grabbing that Bioshock Ultimate Rapture Edition for the same $2 price tag. That was a big deal for me, because I have never found this edition in the wild before, especially for such a ridiculously cheap price. The only reason I did not grab that Bayonetta Vanquish double pack was because the artwork was a reprint and a low quality one at that. I'm weird with reprints. I, I would avoid them like the plague if I had a choice. That being said, I really should have grabbed a few more titles like that SSX on the PS3 and a few others that I thought I had, but don't. However, this is long before I had a collection tracker app installed on my phone called GameEye, which is an absolute godsend for someone like me who has an extensive game collection. It took a little while for me to add everything to the database, but at the time, it's not like I could physically go to work or really walk all that much. So I spent a few days adding games to my app, and now I really don't have an excuse for accidentally buying games I already own or not grabbing games simply because I thought I have them. Now, if you're wondering why I've suddenly cut to motorcycle footage, well, you see, I was originally going to show you clips I had recorded from our trip to the flea market around Mother's Day. But, you see, the camera got so smudged up from my sweaty fat fingers, the footage was so unusable, I, I couldn't include it. I mean, all you could see was this nasty white haze with a blurry image. But don't let that bother you too much, for you see, it's not like it mattered at all. Why? Well, we didn't come across any games of interest, or really anything interesting at all. Yeah, okay, there were a few games here and there sprinkled around, but some of them, if not most of them, were super common titles and or overpriced games that I do already own. So yeah, after almost a year, the very first flea market trip we went to was a complete and total bust. But these things happen. I'm not mad or anything, just mildly disappointed. To make up for that, and the lack of finding all that many games at the thrift stores, I decided to pop over to a disc replay. I figure I have to find something worthwhile. Okay, so I've been meaning to snag this game up for years now. It's got mixed reviews, but I don't really care. It looks interesting to me. For five bucks, and with me being a huge FPS guy, and huge into scary, horror-themed games, I don't really see why not. I didn't know exactly what this was. I saw the price and the cover art and thought it looked interesting. From what I understand, the game is like this survival action RPG type thing. My only concern with it is that if the difficulty is overly challenging or if the game has a heavy learning curve. Who knows, for seven bucks, whatever. I don't really have a problem giving it a try. Wow, okay, so, funny thing. Growing up, I was a gigantic fan of both Romance of the Three Kingdoms and Dynasty Warriors. But I haven't really touched one of these romance games since, I think, 11 on the PS3? But god, that was like over a decade ago. For 10 bucks, I think it's a great deal. The thing to consider about games like Romance, they tend to skyrocket in value years later anyway, especially since they're not typically easy to find. It's kind of the same thing with, like, JRPG games. Sometimes they drop down ridiculously low, and then years later they're worth, like, 50, 60, 70 plus dollars. Case in point is Folklore, a game that I bought for seven bucks, and only in a couple years did it turn out to be worth over 70 dollars? I don't know about you guys, but where I live, Pokemon on the Switch is still a 40 plus dollar game in most secondhand shops. When we saw this for just 25 bucks, we grabbed it faster than you could ever imagine. And good thing too, because ironically, there was another guy asking an employee if they had any Switch Pokemon games. Lucky us. Here's something I never thought I would ever find. Stretch Panic for the PS2. To say this game is uncommon or hard to come across is an understatement. I have never once seen this game at any game store I've ever been to or even from resellers at flea markets or game shows. It's an extremely bizarre title and I know damn well it's worth much more than 20 bucks. I had to snag this. Hmm, 
This is one of those games that either drops in value significantly or skyrockets for no apparent reason. For eight bucks, it's worth the gamble, I guess. Besides, I really do love the original Medieval, so hey, I'm getting my money's worth even if it does drop in price in a year or two. For some reason, I didn't record other games that I picked up, like .hack GU Last Recode for the PS4, a game that was last here for over 20 bucks, I believe. I picked it up for less than half that amount, and I couldn't be happier about it. So that's about it guys, I hope you all enjoyed this very long overdue video. I promised that this series would not end, and I'm still absolutely holding on to that. As for the whole flea market thing, uh, you know, I don't really know what to do about it. The last couple years have been an absolute shit show whenever we would go to the flea market. Like, I don't want to scrap the series or anything, I think I just need to figure out some new locations to go to, because it's more than obvious that the last two places have, if not completely dried up. So with that said, thank you all so much for watching, take care, and I will see you next time.